Now available on 4K UHD and Blu-ray from Blue Underground is The Marquis de Sade's Justine. For the family, this is a Jess Franco film. Now, if you don't know Jess Franco, he was this incredibly prolific Spanish director who worked from the, as far as I know, 60s into at least the 90s. I'm not sure when he passed away, but he worked for decades just cranking out, I believe, like hundreds of movies of, of varying quality. Some people really love Jess Franco. Some people really do not like Jess Franco and think he was just a, a hack who made poor quality films. I fall somewhere probably closer to that opinion than any others, but I haven't seen a lot of Jess Franco films. I've only seen a few, and mostly I've just read that his movies aren't very good. But I'm gonna talk about this one. This is Justine from 1969. This stars, uh, or features, to say it stars Klaus Kinski is, is to pull a little bit of a ballyhoo trick. It features Klaus Kinski, Jack Palance, uh, Sylvia Koshina, Mercedes McCambridge, which you may know as, or may, may or may not know, was the voice of uh, the possessed Reagan in The Exorcist. Uh, Howard Vernon, if it's a Jess Franco film, Howard Vernon's going to be in there somewhere. Uh, Rizal Baneri and uh, Romina Power, who's the daughter of Tyrone Power, as the titular Justine. So the story is basically... Two uh, young sisters, young, late teens, early 20s, uh, are, are sort of uh, released or, or, or sent on their way from an orphanage run by nuns, and one sister decides she's going to go out and, and, and live it up and, and sacrifice her, her, her purity for the sake of a comfortable life, and the other sister, Justine, is going to uh, lead a pure life and, and be, be noble and all of that, and you see how far that gets her in this film. So basically the story is, it's, it's somewhat comedic, not always, but some of it is, is somewhat comedic, is Justine just sort of bopping from situation to situation where she's often the object of lust for older men or other people, and she manages to dodge that bullet time style, you know, not, not necessarily fall into something too, too horrible and get, get out of there before things get too serious or before she uh, surrenders her purity, shall we say. And, uh, I won't get into all the details. The Klaus Kinski character, he plays the Marquis de Sade, and he's in uh, prison, he's in a cell, and it's like he's either looking out the window and, and, and seeing this story unfold, or he's being inspired to write this story, and it's him writing her story down, and occasionally he's either experiencing visions or being tempted or tortured in his cell by, by half-naked ladies and other things like that, if tortured is the word. And uh, Jack Palance is the highlight of the film. So... I'm not going to get into all the details of all the little adventures Justine gets into, but she eventually is, you know, running from a bad situation. She f comes to this, it looks like a seminary or it's a brotherhood or it's an order of monks or something like that. And she comes across somebody who's very kind and takes her in. And Howard Vernon is there with this really Prince Valiant silly wig on. And it turns out that it's this brotherhood that is devoted to uh, exploring the levels of pleasure and all kinds of dirty stuff. And the head of this place is Jack Palance giving probably the most bizarre performance I've I've ever seen Jack Palance give. He's like yelling his lines and sing-songy speaking his lines and going way over the top. It's, it's kind of a jaw dropper. This movie is worth watching alone to see what Jack Palance does for the sequence of the film he's in. Um, the transfer of this is gorgeous. This looks so good. I've watched the 4K disc on a 4K TV, sizable 4K TV, and it's so sharp. And the color is, the skin tones is always what it comes down to. And the color is so good. It does not look like an old movie. It looks like an old movie in terms of, I mean, it's set in the past, but in terms of the filmmaking style, but it looks really really good. And uh, it is the uncut version. This is like a, I think it runs almost two hours. What do I have here? 124 minutes, which is apparently not the version I'm reading that played everywhere. In America, it was cut way down and it was a retitled Deadly Sanctuary and that only runs 90 something minutes. Um, there's an extra where Jess Franco talks about the various versions and he said, you know, this version was pretty good. That one wasn't so bad. That other one was okay. The American one, they, they cut too much out of it. But you see, and the commentators, there's a commentary with uh, film historians, uh, Troy Howarth and Nathaniel Thompson, and they talk about this is the longest version of the film they had seen. They felt like it actually probably works better in a shorter form, but I don't think any super fan of this movie who's never seen the whole length, full length version is going to complain that they get the most they can get of this film. So 
you know, you describe it, you say it's a Marquis de Sade movie and it's a saucy movie with nudity and, and salacious situations. It's not very explicit. There's a little, there's a little nudity here and there. There's a little S and M kind of stuff here and there. It's 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 from 1969. I mean, although X-rated movies existed then and adult films existed earlier than that, but it's really Euro sleaze, maybe I would call it sort of a randy. It's the kind of movie that if you were the age I was in the late 80s, early 90s and had access to Cinemax and you really were hoping for something really salacious, occasionally you'd get something like this, which is a Euro film that's more classy than not, but it's got a decent amount of nudity in it, so they'll, they'll put it on, you know, at 1 a.m. on a Friday night. Um, extras on this are pretty good. The extras I will read to you from this uh, original cell sheet in my hand. You have a new interview with uh, Rosal Neri talking about working with Jess Franco. She's mostly talking about working with him on a film called 99 Women, which this is not, but uh, it's great to see her. She talks a little bit about Justine, but it's great to see her. She's super sweet, super nice. She has a, a message to her fans, which is done just so wonderfully and sweetly. And it's eight minutes and I wish it was 18 minutes because it's just really cool. She was like one of the, to me, one of the icons of 60s, 70s Euro cult cinema. You get uh, Stephen Thrower on Justine. This is an older uh, carryover from a previous release. This is a uh, Franco biographer talking about uh, the film. And that is, let's see, I do have notes. Let me correct you that. Disc one is the movie on 4K the commentary, which is very good, and the uh, French trailer, which runs four minutes and is under the title of Dissad, The Misfortunes of Virtue. A lot of times they do this. They devote the maximum bit rate to the quality of the film, and if there's a second disc, the extras are on the second disc. So disc two is the regular movie on Blu-ray, still from the new transfer, but just not 4K. Still looks great. And the same commentary, and then you get the Rizal Benari interview, and you get the uh, Stephen Thrower piece. The Stephen Thrower piece is uh, 18 minutes. You get an older extra that's an interview with uh, Jess Franco himself and Harry Allen Towers, who I think was the writer and the producer of this film. That runs 20 minutes and you get a still gallery, newly expanded still gallery that is about roughly 97. I say, when I give you these numbers, it's the number of stills you step through. Some of those stills just say lobby cards, but roughly 90 plus stills, more than there were before. And those break down into posters for the film, uh, advertising materials, it's like press books and things like that. Uh, lobby cards, black and white stills, video and soundtrack releases, and book covers. So there's a ton of stuff on here. And it uh, it looks great, and it, sorry that my eye line, I'm just making sure I'm not missing anything from it. Oh yeah, it also has on that Blu-ray the Deadly Sanctuary version of the movie. And what this is, is the edit that played in the US, the edit that had the initial US uh, video release, but it is not taken from that print. This is um, conformed to that. So this is the new transfer. So it looks it looks just like it does in the other, uh, on the Blu-ray and in the 4K, the same transfer, but it's just cut to match what the US version was like. So the original title that pops up or the Deadly Sanctuary title that pops up is a recreation. It's a video generated title. So for me, that's a little disappointing because I want to see like w what it looked like back then, but it could be that all that survives from what it looked like is a bad videotape transfer from 1986, and you don't really want to see that on a Blu-ray. So if you want to try to experience this movie, what it would have looked like in its best form, its best possible transfer, the Deadly Sanctuary version, that's on the Blu-ray too. So um, I enjoyed this. I kind of skipped what my opinion on this was. So yeah, I went into this dreading it because what I had seen of Jess Franco wasn't that great, and what I've read about Jess Franco made me think it wouldn't be that great, but it was fun. It was competently made. It was a good score, Bruno Nicolai's score, really good score. Uh, well shot, really cool locations uh, in um, Spain or Europe, or it wasn't Spain, it was a, 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 a France, Austria, somewhere in Europe where they shot this, I don't remember. And uh, really, really nice transfer. And cool to see, you know, I, I think of Jess Franco as Euro films with the actors he worked with, but mostly people I don't recognize. Again, I don't know his movies that well. And it was cool to see, you know, names, recognizable faces and names in this too. Uh, Kinski is barely in the film. It's funny that, you know, he, he might be listed as the star here and there, but really he's in it for maybe a couple minutes over the whole two hour duration. They just cut to him every once in a while. And every time they do, I'm like, oh yeah, he's in this. And, and, and there's this thing that's kind of connected. I think 
I don't know, maybe the Deadly Sanctuary version dumps that. I did not watch it, but I think you could easily lose the Kinski stuff in this. It doesn't really have much bearing on it. Um, it's not as salacious as one might think, depending, uh, based on the subject matter. It gets into sleazy areas, and uh, boy, is Jack Palance amazing in this. I would say, seriously, for Jack Palance alone, it is well worth getting. So, available now on Blu-ray, 4K and uh, Blu-ray, two discs. So if you don't have 4K, you're getting a new amazing transfer on Blu-ray. And if you ever get a 4K player or TV, you've got that disc there, uh, is The Marquis de Sade's Justine.